It's time for today's episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast, recorded in front of a slightly tipsy studio audience at world-famous Champions Fried Chicken. We will have the latest on Georgia Bulldogs football, basketball, and recruiting. Watch live and send us your questions on the 11 Alive Sports page on Facebook. Be advised this podcast is off the record and not safe for work. Also, be sure to subscribe to the UGA Sports Live Podcast on iTunes and Google Play. Hey everybody, welcome to the UGA Sports Live Podcast here at Champions on Baxter Street. Champy's home of the fried catfish plate here. We got one right in front of us. I would really enjoy that. That's why it's down by me. I'm Roddy DeBulsey. I'm joined by Jake Roost, the recruiting uh, savant at UGASports.com. And we have Jim Donnan, former head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, down to my right. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Georgia's gone through its second scrimmage of the year. Uh, some good news for Georgia, some bad news for Georgia. Uh, it's that time of the year where you, you put out a great story and then you put out one right behind it. It's kind of... That's it for this episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast. Tune in next week for more Georgia Bulldogs news and notes from Athens. I got the honey blonde. I got the IQ IPA as always. Oh, man, that is so good. Anyway, uh, quick shout out to Athens Ford, uh, who's also one of our big sponsors. If you, I, I'll tell you more about it in the show, but, but first things first, I got to tell you that this Friday from 4 to 6, you can go out and see Harry Dog, the uh, Georgia mascot. Uh, he's going to have a photo booth out there. You can get your kids and have the pictures made with him. Nice. Uh, they're going to have the UGA cheerleaders out there. Now, that's worth going and having your picture <laughs> made with. So you swing out and see the cheerleaders. Uh, also, they're going to have a little dude uh, ice cream. It'll be free ice cream for any of the attendees. A uh, little dude ice cream guy. He is the little ice cream dude. Excuse me. He yes. is a kid that goes to my son's school, Athens Christian. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, uh, actually, I used to work with his mom. I, I coached him in basketball. Well, there you go. <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, so we got those guys coming out. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, people walk coming into Champions here to get all the great fried food they have. But again, four to six at Athens Ford this Friday. Don't miss it. They're going to have a – oh, they got a 1968 Shelby Mustang out there you got to see. Uh, One of a kind. Okay. One yeah, of a kind. that sounds fine. So go swing out there, 4 to 6, at Athens Ford this Friday. Don't miss it. Uh, they're actually going to have the uh, Rose Bowl playing on a, um, in one of their trucks that you can actually – in the bed of it, you know, you can actually have this package put in with a TV. It's, it's impressive. So swing out there and see it. Uh, big shout-out to Aaron Overhead Doors, our newest sponsor. They are a huge Georgia fan. If you need a garage door replaced or repaired or installed, anything you need done with your garage door, your overhead door, swing by Aaron Overhead Doors. And if you people are like, are you saying Argon? No, it's Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. You done messed up, Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> A-A-R-O-N. You, uh, yeah, yeah uh, especially, I mean, if you're in the Gwinnett area, Buford. Um, North Atlanta. In, at, yeah, Atlanta, anywhere. Yeah. Just uh, give these guys a call. They'll hook it up and uh, – Huge Georgia fans to boot. So. They also do a lot of charity work. We'll talk about them more in the show. Yeah, we mentioned Academia. Of course, Cable East, Robert Wall out in Statham. Uh, big sponsor of the show. Thank you, Robert Wall, for sponsoring the show. And, of course, 365 Game Day. You know, everyone's looking at their gear. You know those black hats with the little red? Uh, it's ticking down. Yeah. You better. You better they got the black hat. The, 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 the Georgia logo hat. And I mean the Georgia State. You know, the oh, yeah, yeah, outline yeah. of the yeah. state. Those are very popular hats right now. He got some in in red and black. The hat is completely black, but the uh, Georgia is outlined in red. It is a sharp-looking hat. They sold out their last batch in 24 hours. They got a new batch in, so get over to 365 game day as fast as you can. Grab that hat. Uh, of course, we are Where on do they the, go to get to that? Where is that located? Uh, it's, it's, online? On, it's online. Just go to 365gameday.com. Click on the Georgia site. Again, huge Georgia fan, big Georgia sponsor, sponsor of our site. So we uh, shout out to him. And, of course, we are on the 11 Alive Facebook page. Now, if you didn't know this, then you're an idiot. But <laughs> the 11 Alive team uh, this past uh, weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they broadcast nine Georgia high school football games on the my, T- my ATL station. That was done by the folks at WXIA 11 Alive. So the high school football season in the state of Georgia was kicked off by the guys at WXIA. Shout out to 11 Alive for going to the trouble and the expense and all that stuff of putting on nine fantastic, well, eight fantastic football games. One was a blowout. But uh, they had a great uh, great number of people watching it. And, I mean, we had Chad Simmons there. He saw a bunch of stuff. Uh, he had a great article about, you know, the highlights of the players that were there. Got uh, a little, yeah, we may need a little volume. We can do that. All right. Let's turn it up a little bit. So, there we go. Hey, Dave. Yeah, let's turn us, it down over there. There we go. 
Yeah, let us know how we sound out there now. We uh, have turned things up a little bit. So, Turning uh, it up. Can you hear me now? There we go. There we go. All right, so now we're up a little bit higher. So anyway, uh, swing out uh, to uh, Champies when you get a chance, and that way you don't have to worry about if we're low on the podcast or not. <laughs> there you, <go. laughs> you can always come out here. Anyway, uh, I want to jump right into the uh, football talk. Coach, uh, Georgia's had a – some good news and some bad news, and they missed on commitment, got a commitment. But I think the news that rules the day is the fact that Zamir White is, by all accounts, out for the season. We have uh, we reported that he uh, tore his ACL in the scrimmage recently. Uh, that was kind of a gut punch for Georgia fans. This is a guy who had 7,000 yards in his high school career. Uh, as a senior, he had um, over uh, 2,000 yards and 34 touchdowns. He scored 119 touchdowns in his high school career. Uh, you know, the guy that you kind of thought was coming in to replace Nick Chubb, you know, that between-the-tackles runner, the guy that just has the uh, the mass, the bulk, the speed to – and it's not a shot against DeAndre Swift or Brian Harrigan or guys like that, but this is your – you know, if it's third and three, that's the guy who I would put money on to get the ball, him or Elijah Holyfield. And when he goes down, uh, it just – everyone wanted to see this five-star, number one tailback in the nation go off and – I don't want to tell people, Georgia fans, you shouldn't be disappointed in that because you should, but uh, what's your take on the situation? Well, first of all, as a coach or as a parent or as a fan, you always hate it. First, you know, just for the kid himself, just to uh, be around him a little bit in the spring uh, that I was over there uh, watching him work out uh, on his own before practice started and then all all summer, you know, just continuing to get a little bit less of a brace on his leg and you're really starting to surface and, and, you know, resume a lot of confidence in your leg. You know, it's a tough injury for anybody when you get your knee, you know, operated on. But he, he really came back from it uh, tremendously. And rather than harp on that, it's just a, a situation that, you know, freak accidents happen. Uh, yeah. They happen to uh, all of us. Uh, I mean, from the standpoint of all teams. Fortunately, last year we didn't have many uh, happen to us. But, you know, we uh, – just got to understand that uh, there's a plan in place. There's some good players. Fortunately, we've had two good backs that have had a lot of experience on special teams and being backups there in uh, Harrington and, and the Holyfield. And then Swift uh, really looks good this fall and is ready to go. So, uh, And then James Cook gives another little uh, wrinkle there. And then we've got the added deal of having the Wildcat with guys like uh, Mecole and uh, – certainly Robertson so there's a lot of different ways for us to be uh, you know very good in the running game but uh, at the same time it, it's definitely a blow it's a blow for the kids morale because you know uh, I'm talking about overall players because they, they saw how hard he worked and he had really uh, achieved a lot of uh, you know player belief in him you know the old line saw what he could bring to the table so but you know it's just part of the game I mean it's easy to say that but it's part of the game you gotta gotta just uh, everybody hitch up their belt and get away to go and uh, fortunately we got some good guys in tow to, to really uh, fill in and and see what happens not not that there's ever a good time for anything like this to happen um, uh, of course I mean you never want to see a guy get injured you never want to see a guy get hurt <clears throat> but I mean, I guess if you had to choose a time, is this when you'd want it? That way you can kind of game plan for, you know, how to how to account for it throughout the season. Well, fortunately, again, I've said fortunately three times here, but <laughs> seriously, the, the, the way we are set up in our install, what, what we do with our players is uh, we have an install in the spring where they put in everything and the kids learn it. Then they come back again and do it in the early summer before uh, – the freshmen get here and then they do it again and then the fourth time is actually the practice so uh, they've had a chance to look at a lot of different variations of things they could do and one of the real pluses I think having a veteran like coach Cheney is you have a what if scenario always in place it, you know we're going to do this but if this happens we're ready to go to this that's why you see guys like Mays and Hill and all these guys moving around playing a lot of different positions because you got to be ready if something happens in there to get, you know, even though Mays is a tackle, uh, he's behind a, tr a red shirt freshman right now. So he might be the next best lineman. I don't know that. But you got to move him around and see what you got to do. And that's what Pittman's doing. Same thing's been happening with the backs, moving them around like that. And uh, I think that's 
uh, having a veteran staff like that with Kirby being around uh, like he has and, and letting uh, Cheney, you know, look at all those different scenarios, I think we'll be ready to um, find a way to maybe still run some two-back look maybe with uh, Nauta and Werner as a JoJo guy that can go across the formation and be a lead blocker. And I don't look for us to be in a two-back set that much, but, you know, I, we'll see what happens there. But – we certainly got a lot of firepower on our team. I mean, when you, you you lose White, but you get Robertson. So, I mean, you know, it's a a tough, tough fight there. But certainly we got some guys that can smoke. I mean, that can really show you their taillights. I mean, I mean just flat-out speed out there. I'm, I'm, I, I, the thing for me is, and, you know, we, we talked about how bad we feel for Zamir. I, I do, certainly, because for him to work so hard to get back – and Eight to months. overcome something like yeah. that and to be so close to the season opener and then your other leg, of all things, you know, yeah. you think, like, you probably got some concern about that that uh, that uh, old lingering injury, maybe something could go wrong with that, and then for the, the other leg to go out, uh, it's just uh, it's just brutal for the kid. I, I hate to hear it. And just, you know, we have had a, a kid recently committed to Georgia, and I was rethinking about it by the name of Kyle Sturdivant, and it just – that start of a name popped up in my head when I was thinking about guys with knee injuries, and I'm like, oh, man, don't don't let this happen to this kid, Samir White. He is a – like I said, I say it all the time when people ask me – I do radio all over the country, and they say, well, what about Samir White? And I always bring up the same thing that we heard from uh, college coaches who were recruiting him. They missed out on him, but they said, look, this kid is a generational back. Adrian Peterson-esque. I mean, they yeah. compared him to a guy like that. Right. And so you know, you the, that, that's that's a really good point there. And excuse me for interrupting, but I, I forget things and why you keep talking. But uh, I've had three different coaches, and they, they know that I go around there a little bit, not near as much as Chip Towers thinks I do. But uh, And when I do, I never tell you guys anything that I see. <laughs> We uh, know. I promise we, 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 we dig. We dig <laughs> nothing. If I did, it nothing. If I did, it wouldn't be. My whole purpose on this show, I enjoy being around you. I enjoy standing up for Kirby and talking about the program, but I'm never going to tell you anything that I see out there. But we know. I, I will say this, though, that I've had three different coaches reach out to me that were involved in recruiting this guy for other schools and saying, hey, Boy, I feel really feel bad for Zamir. If you see him, tell him, give him my best. You know, I mean, that's pretty classy. I think. That's very classy. And like I said, these uh, coaches, everybody wanted him. Uh, Georgia got him. And I remember, remember in the early in the spring and in the summer, I kept talking about we we don't talk about James Cook. Yeah. And then it kind of popped up. But I remember when James Cook committed, a lot of people, and not to say that they would turn down a five star running back, but a lot of people thought, why is he going there? You know, it's from you know, again, there's the fan bases and the coaches from these other schools. And I had some of those coaches hit me up and go, how did George get him when they already had Zamir White? Doesn't he know he'll never see the field with Zamir there? And I'm like, I, they're two different backs. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, look, if Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb can share the field at the same time, and then a, a f- true freshman by the name of DeAndre Swift get as many carries as he did. Yeah, there's room. There's room. So I said, you know, and James isn't scared. He he doesn't think that he's so far away from, you know, uh, Zamir White talent-wise that he's not going to get a chance to play. This kid thinks he can come in and win a spot or at least do something different that Zamir doesn't. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at uh, – and let's put it, James is not a big dude. No, not he, at he's all. Skinny. He'll put on weight and he'll, he'll, he'll get bigger. On. But but, he, but the, I'm about to say the, the determination that he carries is the same amount of determination Absolutely. that uh, Zamir White does. Absolutely. Also, you got a guy by the name of Elijah Holyfield who wants to show that, hey, I was the number two back in the nation when I was recruited and when I signed with Georgia. Granted, he was like 102, but it's a, it was a down year for running backs. That's right. But he's still number two. And that is a guy who, if you know, everyone's like, why are you coming when there's Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle here? He's got the same bloody determination to show everybody what he can do. Go back to that uh, run he had uh, at uh, Notre Dame that was called back. You know, he takes it to the house on a kickoff. That guy's going to do it again. Yeah. And, and everyone, and I'll be the first one, you know, clap, good job, because that guy has busted his tail, and he's always been looked as an afterthought. He's, but he's remained hungry. Um, he's waited his turn. I yeah. mean, there's nothing. You, you want to talk about, you know, people use the phrase damn good dog a lot. A guy like Elijah Holyfield and the role that he's played for this team. Yeah. Hey, you know, he's done everything you could possibly ask of him. He's hit the weight room hard, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's backed up some greats for Georgia. He's waited his time, and, uh, you know, possibly this opens the door for him to uh, to have this big season. But, but Coach could talk about this. When you have a guy who shows up and he doesn't play immediately because there's two stellar people ahead of him 
people almost think he's a bust. You know, they're like, oh, well, you know, he's not on the field a whole lot. He comes in to after Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle have done all the heavy lifting. Well, yeah, because those guys are, you know, a first round and a high second round pick. <laughs> and that's not to say They're you would be. They're built to lift. <laughs> yeah. those, you use the guys you have, but also, that's Brian. Where, that's where the silver lining, though, of this injury and Chubb's injury come into the forefront of recruiting is you say, look, when a guy was would talk to you and negatively recruit, say, Avery or – uh, is that the kid? What's his name? Emery or Avery? I can't. Emery. 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 So, you know, why would you go there? That's a, this is. Oh, the we re- got a lot of questions about that. Why is he going this there after the, they just signed two five is, stars? <laughs> this is the reason. And you do the same thing. Chubb got hurt. The one thing I always talk to kids about: don't worry about somebody that's on, in the program. If that's where you want to go and you're good enough, you're going to play. Situations happen. We play a lot of players, so I don't think that's near as prevalent with the players as it, is, as it is with the people that bring it up, you know, well, and, and that's why and I it's really it an insult. I'm not talking about you, Brandon. <laughs> I'm talking about it's really an insult to the player that, you know, hey, you can't play there, but you can play for us. And so. Kirby, Kirby Smart, I think, has made a very clear uh, statement in that way and said, look, we don't want guys who feel like they can't play with this team. We want guys who feel like – we want Justin Fields who feels like he can beat out Jake Fromm for this job. That's what they're searching for. That's the kind of metal these kids are made out of. We got a question related to this, and I think we should touch on it. John Larson wants to know, which of these running backs will really step up in light of Zeus's injury? Which guy is going to end up uh, kind of maybe – filling the role that he had. Do you think it's going to be Elijah? I do, but here's the thing. I think Elijah was already has, has already stepped up. If you had to give me uh, a piece of paper to write down the depth chart, I'd put DeAndre Swift and Elijah Holyfield. And remember, DeAndre Swift's kind of been battling a groin issue for a while, so he, I don't think he's 110%. So let's say that uh, you know Elijah Holyfield may be your number one back right now, but of the type of carries that I imagined uh, Zamir White getting, I think those – I do believe that this kid was going to play this year, and maybe he those type of runs or that type of uh, offense or whatever, some of those would go to Holyfield, some would go to uh, Zamir White. I think now maybe most of those go to Holyfield. But, again, I want to t- touch back on what you're talking about, guys who are determined. You know, we saw what uh, waiting his turn. Brian Herring, remember, as a freshman – this kid came on, and he wasn't supposed to make it to He wasn't even supposed, supposed to make to it to college. D1 college. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it looked like the JUCO route was where yeah. he was headed. That was why he was so lightly recruited coming yeah. out of high school. People say, how did you get Harry, and how did, how, did, yeah. how did Georgia find that kid? It's because the grades were in a situation where people were saying, there's no way this guy will qualify. Right. So he, was an, he became an afterthought. Here's, and, and here's he a good point there, I think, too, to, to throw in there from uh, Dale McGee's standpoint and Coach Smart and Coach Cheney. You mentioned Swift's injury in the spring, and it really prohibited him from having a really good shot sure. at uh, going full speed. And he might have come back a little bit too quick because, uh, you know, and then it just kept persisting. It was so, only three months after his surgery. Right. So what happens is you get both Brian and Elijah get uh, get to be in the briar patch the whole spring. That's true. They're out there all spring being the man running yeah. the rock. Uh, Picking up blitzes, doing against everything. that number one defense. So yeah. they really do have a, a plus. They've seen uh, Sony and, and Nick work, and mm-hmm. they know what it takes. And they've been around some big games. And I think that's uh, you know something we're going to really rely on here. Now, usually speaking, unless you're a power team like Georgia or Alabama or Clemson, you're not going to have uh, running back stacked up like club sandwiches where you can go five and six deep. I mean, so. Having four guys like this is a premium, I think. You know, I'm just making the best out of what we got. But I really feel good about these two guys, the the, the experience they've had in games and what they were able to do in 15 practices this spring because they were toting the mail most of the time and doing all the dirty work, so to speak. And I want to bring up one other guy that uh, if you go to UJSports.com right now, there's a, a great video breakdown from uh, our Trent Smallwood. And he says, you know who else can take on that running role that uh, Elijah Holyfield may have vacated? I mean, Samir, not, not, White. Uh, Samir White may have vacated. He said Justin Fields. 
Yeah. Six, he's six foot three, two hundred twenty-five pounds. For now, heaven's sake, don't you tell Kirby <laughs> Smart that now he will kick your ass out of everything that's ever happened. I'm not saying he becomes a running back. I'm no, just saying I'm just talking about he's scared to death of the guy getting hurt. Yeah. And, oh and, yeah, and absolutely. Bo, we got two quarterbacks. I mean, he's not going to run those guys. Yeah, much. I'm just come saying, on, but come on, for a guy Roddy. that can do it, come on, man, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he could do it if, if need be. When you were in that run, that well, wild dog formation, they're in that pistol formation, oh, whatever. Yeah. That is a guy who can tuck it and run and knock somebody over. So, again, personally, I'd prefer he hand it off to Elijah Holyfield, see what he can do. Heck, I'd give it to Hudson gonna, Prather. Not going to happen unless – Prather Hudson. Hudson. <laughs> maybe, yeah. it, maybe it might happen in the – you know, in the – Inside the twenty is a change up and all. That's, but, that's what I'm referring to. But you're talking about as oh not, no, not, not from their a, own fifteen. Not <laughs> as a, going in as a running back. You're talking no, about no. As, okay. Not yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. On those RPOs, what if he decides to uh, hold it down and run it? That guy is a heck of a runner. He is tough to catch. And right. we had uh, Georgia players saying, "Look, I hate trying to chase that kid down. He's just elusive." So he again, I'm not is. saying he's a between the tackles guy, but you know, as going in as a running back, but just the fact that. If all of a sudden everything breaks down, you've got a guy who has running back ability in the quarterback position. He throws it like, you know, with a cannon, great accuracy. And again, I'm, I must my weekly uh, pitch for let's see Justin Fields play. <laughs> it's very subtle. I don't subtle. think you're going to have to pitch anybody <laughs> no, that hard. Saying, I'm just excited about what he can do. And I thought that it was neat that Trent brought up hey, you know, there's also a guy who. From the quarterback position, you know, if he decides to keep it on a, a, a RPO or decides to, you know, on quarterback run or a naked bootleg or something like that, this guy run. He's not just – he's not Aaron Murray running the ball. Sure. And no, no right. shots against Aaron. I love Aaron. But, I mean, he's 6'3", 225, and we, we showed clips of him just knocking guys to the ground. Well, and the thing about Justin is that I, I think sometimes people forget, and if you didn't follow his career as much in high school, is that – that was really where that was his bread and butter early on. Yeah. He became a he became a great passer. He was always a great runner and a, a great point. athlete. Good point. But he became a great passer going into that senior year. Really, the spring that that fall and spring of, of junior year um, is when he took that step forward. And that was always the concern: would he be able to get his arm right? And uh, he certainly did. But you know, he's a guy who who has all those tools. Uh, Alan Verbanchik with a good question here. He says. Can Zeus totally recover from this by 2019 or 2020? I, my cons- my, I, I want to alter this question a little bit and throw it at you, Coach. Does a guy ever really fully recover from, uh, you know, both of these knees gone, you know, but, or both of these knees go out at one point? Do, does he ever get back to being the same person, or is he a different back? He's just going to have to adjust just like everybody does when thing, you know, wh- whatever – situation presents itself to any player injury wise you're going to have to see how your body adjusts and uh, certainly we got tremendous surgeons around here I'm sure Dr. Hancock will do this again just like he re- operated on the first time but it's just a question of uh, you know it's a little bit different for a back to have an injury to your legs and to have two of them now he's just it's all uh, up in the air as far as you know and a lot of it's going to be psychological too and that's what he's been able to do this fall is he was able to get over that barrier and did a lot of stuff contact wise and that's what makes you sick he was ready to almost they were talking about taking the brace off before the first yeah. game so but he'll he'll do if anybody can make it just like nick chubb you know i mean i saw what nick went through if anybody can do it uh, zeus can do it and he'll have the support of everybody around here and uh, it's just uh, one of those i mean just can't say anything we've talked about it we can talk about it all show but we were just sick in our stomach over it but what else we got here let's talk about some good news yeah so was one of the last thursday you went down to gmc and georgia messed out on a kid named dj daniel yep uh cornerback yeah one of the kind of call him a defensive back but i wasn't sure exactly yeah pr- primarily a cornerback okay. a guy that um you know they were looking at i think pretty heavily as maybe the heir apparent to um a guy like deandre baker who's right. who's going to go to the league uh, so, after this year you know they wanted an experienced guy the guys that they've got this year are young and they're going to be getting some game experience but deandre a proven commodity in the sec this guy very similarly sized maybe even a little bit larger than deandre Great speed, uh, just a, a great cover guy. And they, they'll still recruit him. He wound up uh, surprising everybody. He committed to South Carolina, yep. so you know, we understand that. Uh, George is going to still keep going after him. Uh, and contrary to some uh, popular opinion, the, Georgia missed on him. I mean, they, they thought they were getting him. They didn't get him. So, But the reason I want to say I want to bring yeah. up good news was right before that, 
Georgia gets their third defensive lineman out of Tennessee? Yeah, they've uh, what? pretty much on? only gotten uh, out of Tennessee this year. And, you know, I was looking. It was, it's was. it been very interesting. I was looking at Tennessee's um, uh, commitment list and Georgia's commitment list. They're trading blows, man. Uh, uh, you know, Jeremy Pruitt not saying that he's necessarily swooped up a ton of guys that Georgia was hard after. But, you know, guys like Jalen McCullough and uh, Wanya Morris are, are guys that Georgia was recruiting and, and was, was in on. You know, Ramel Keaton, not as much, although right. I think he's a tremendous player. And I think that was a great gift for Tennessee. He showed that in the Corky Kell uh, Classic. But I think that, uh, you know, going in, into there for the position of need and you're also kind of making great use of – those Dan Lanning connections in Memphis and Trey Scott's background in that area as well. I mean, you know, these are guys who um, are familiar with recruiting that area. They know Memphis. They know Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, for him to go on, uh, it was a uh, – I, I thought kid's I, from Nashville area. Yeah, uh, he is from Nashville, actually. Yeah, uh, so Bill Norton – Bill Norton is uh, Memphis. You got Zion Logue, who's just from outside of Nashville in Lebanon, Tennessee. And then Tymon is, is from the Nashville area. Um, and, and reflecting so, back on what Roddy was saying about Daniel, I think we might have got a little bit hurt by the fact that people knocking us about how many defensive backs we got. You know, at the point, yeah. we got they're, – they're saying, hey, you got Campbell and Smith, two blue chip guys in their freshman class. You got all those other people. And, Pool, uh, Count, Stokes. And so uh, it, it goes <laughs> the other way sometime. But I, I, I do feel like we'll still continue to – uh, go after some of these guys at, till the end, but uh, you can't get them all. And uh, certainly, defensive line. Is, is, as long as we keep getting guys like this, that really helps us. And uh, yeah, and that was a, that was good news. Yeah, you missed out on a, a JUCO defensive back, but you do have a lot of those now. And and Kirby's going to want more. I mean, there's no question about it. Like you said, Coach, uh, he wants to get those guys bigger, physical. Um, you know, he's going to go after talented players. But to me, the emergency in this class was defensive line. Absolutely. Right. Bringing in, uh, is it Tymon? Uh, I, I've been saying Tymon. Tymon. Yeah. Tymon Mitchell, this is a big guy, you know, and I think it was a big hit for Georgia. He's and young, he, he announced, He's yeah, young. Yeah, young, and he announced right before uh, the Daniel thing went down. So, Which was interesting timing, yeah, wasn't it? was interesting it? timing. Considering that he was probably in class or you would think you doing would think. something of that nature. Well, you would hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well, yeah, for better him, be. the, the, you got to think that the timing there was um, – I'm not saying I'm yeah. not saying it was scheduled necessarily, but it was. Uh, you got to think that there was something to it. Anyway. He was ready to bust out. He came down here for camp. He had a tremendous workout. Our guys liked him, and then they just said, "Hey, we'd like to watch you in a scrimmage and see how you progress from last year to this year." So uh, they they watched him uh, last week. Um, I mean, I think I told you that they yeah. watched him, and he really did well. He was ready to pull the trigger, and we we just uh, there's a lot of them that like to pull the trigger, go yeah. to Georgia, but you know you just you got to be uh, reassured that you can transform that ability with your pad zone, and he must have done that. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Roddy, his potential is really out there. And I think this kid from the other kid you mentioned, Logue, was, yeah, Logue. is only 17, and he's he's got long arms, going to be big kid. And uh, I really like the other kid uh, from uh, Memphis, too. He, he, he came out Norton. early. So uh, the more and more guys we get like that, the better the depth is going to be there. And, uh, you know, I just believe in the secondary, I, I wanted to reflect what you were talking about, Baker leaving and all. Uh, we, we certainly lost some good players, you know, when you look at Parrish and Sanders and those guys. But athletically, we have up the ante here oh, on no the doubt. kind of guys that are lining up back there. And uh, I saw where Roddy was talking about Stokes just made monumental ah monumental move here with his speed. I mean, he's a track star that has developed into a football guy with uh, Coach Smart and Coach Tucker giving him the technique, and his recovery speed is just so good that it's hard for somebody to run by him. And uh, he's gotten more physical and, you know, you just don't take for granted being out there and getting those reps, and that'll carry over to him when he gets in the game because he's been out there uh, getting a lot of reps with that group, and he's taking advantage of the fact that we, as as much as it hurt us to lose Amir White, losing Tyreek McGee is a big injury right That's now. That's a good point. A lot of people are kind guy, of glossing that over. The guy can play every position back there. He can line up as a kind of handyman. He's a toolbox guy that can go back there. And you need a star, you need a free safety, you need a corner, you need a nickel guy, whatever, a dime guy. He can line up and, and play it. 
The, the one saving grace about his injury that I feel like is in our favor is he's had that injury before. He knows he knows how to rehab from it. That's he knows point. what the pain tolerance was and how, you know, a lot of times when you have an injury and you, you're just not real confident and you, you're really kind of feeling your way and then you get back in there, hey, I can do this. He knows what he was able to do with that injury before right. and now he might be able. And it's not like – I mean, nothing against Austin P, but it's not like it, we got to have him for that game, you know. I mean, we'd love to, but uh, well, I'm, I've been imp- impressed with some of these guys in lesser roles, like William Poole, uh, Stokes, that just sat in there and, and hung in there and, and know what to do and compete. And then you add D'Lo coming back with a good attitude and, and a good – not that he didn't have one, but everything has, has happened to him bad, and he's come back there and he's competed – and he gives you a big, strong, physical guy back there to add to that. Then you add speed. And, uh, you know, there's some good-looking guys back there. And the one that makes my mouth completely go over Niagara Falls water is Campbell. Tyson Campbell. Yeah, we heard a lot about him in this past scrimmage, that he was really doing well. <laughs> you know, well, I didn't, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the scrimmage part because – Go ahead. I, go but, ahead. Come on, Coach. But I'm, that's not my role. But I do feel like that – Watching him in individual drills uh, this summer, doing stuff. Um, and you talk about a kid right now that can run for governor, classy, walk up to you, look you in the eye. How you doing, coach? I mean, he, he's just a classy kid. I mean, he you, you can tell right off the bat that this is a guy you want to be on your team, be in your school, be in your – Reminds whatever. me of William Poole. I'm just telling you, this guy – personifies yeah. class well i and he just walked up i mean the first time i ever met him he just walked up to me didn't know me from a jar of vicks vapor rub walked up to me and said how you doing and said i'm tyson and he said i'm tyson campbell from miami i said i know who you are and all and i start he didn't know who i was and i didn't really say anything and uh, i just talked to him but i mean I, that impresses me absolutely yeah. that impressed absolutely. me i told you about this summer uh, i mean this winter when tyson when channy tyndall did that yep. i mean but uh, we got yeah, – You're getting uh, some good players. Uh, Jordan Davis, kind of the same way. You look at the – Miko Hardman, if he had to be the president of your team, you'd be fine with that. Or Terry Justin Godwin. Field. Terry oh, yeah, Godwin. Terry, you know, uh, and uh, the last the time Terry I'd Godwin – I'd take Michael did. Thornton right now and put him right. out there and lead the team, Michael, and he would. I mean, he's just yeah. a great kid. Uh, Terry Godwin, I mean, have you ever seen him when, when he wasn't smiling? No. I mean – No. He could probably break his leg and he'd smile through it. <laughs> ah, come on, man. I'm yeah, you know, he, I know that's, he, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. He'd be laying there just holding it and smiling. Yeah. I'm, uh, just, I'm just a big believer in, in in the way you present yourself around, you know. Then why I do you do this never, show? I never had a lot of sour pusses that really did much for me. Have you? No, no. no you no, you make a great point. And, I employ a few. And you, <laughs> you, you talked about <laughs> – really? um, you talk about uh, Tyreek, and I, I think that that's an interesting question because that star role suddenly kind of gets thrown back into the mix as something that you thought you largely had settled. I mean, obviously Kirby is not going out on a limb and naming starters today or anything like that, but you felt like Tyreek was the guy who was getting the lead there. Who kind of steps up into that role if he's unable to go? Uh, Got to be D'Angelo. That would be D'Angelo Gibbs. And then I, here's the thing: I, I, lo- I, I love Tyreek because he's so physical. I would say Poole. Really? Just because uh, Poole and Pool and D'Lo are there, and then but you got if Stokes keeps coming, you could play Webb there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he would be a great star. So, uh, and you see so many teams now that have these multiple formations that you got to be able to get and substitute. Last year, you know, we had. Uh, Carter could move out there and still play the run and, you know, not really be a real tremendous cover guy, but he'd play out there in the slot. And we're doing some of that with some of these bigger guys. But I tell you the position, we got them stacked up like Cordwood and is with Devontae Walker and uh, Cox and uh, Grant. Oh, and yeah. Brent uh, Cox, Walter Grant, DeAndre Walker. God. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 outside linebacker room. I, I was just telling someone this weekend that I, I think Gray, my bad. I think that those guys are. I think that that's as talented a group as you'll find in the country. I think with Adam Anderson, Brenton Cox, um, you, you know that that group is top to bottom. One, the sky's the limit. One point zero six seconds. That's how long it takes Adam Anderson to get to from a three point stance to go four yards and pick a tennis ball up off the ground. 
Look at you, sports He's going to be a ball boy in the U.S. Open. Open. I'm just saying. <laughs> he, he'd be the fastest one ever. <laughs> and you see Anderson go up to the Nadal and say, here's your ball, Mr. Nadal. <laughs> the only one that could look him in the eye would be Isner. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But here's the thing. They were actually timing them. Uh, Dan Lanning had all the guys lined up, and there were a cone. They're about four and a half yards apart. And they had to line up on the line of scrimmage, and he, could, he said, look, take a two-point, three-point stance, your choice. And they had a ball on a stick, and they'd move the ball to simulate, you know, uh, when the snap was. So they didn't know when the ball was going to move. And they would take that one step. You know, he's working on their explosion. Get sure. them, get them come off the line quick. Sure. And they'd take one step, two steps, and they'd reach to the ground and snatch that ball up. You know, kind of dip in your shoulder to get underneath that, out, that uh, left or right tackle. And he made them do it from both sides. And he was calling out the times, and we were listening. Brenton Cox can fly. Adam Anderson, though, is the quickest. I'm not and, surprised. And Kirby walked over because he messed up on, a, you know, on his drill. And Kirby said in front of everybody, Adam, you're the fastest guy out here. Show it to me. And on his next rep, Adam took off. So Brent Cox is a monster. That kid is going to play a lot. But Adam Anderson's even quicker. And to your point, Coach, when I, I've mentioned this for the entire – ever since uh, the national championship game, Georgia loses so many st- starts in – Davin Bellamy and Lorenzo Carter, but they're kind of replacing them with guys who might be better. And you know, if, if and at worst, very inexperienced. At worst, compare very favorably. Well, yeah. they got yeah. the same same kind of mo as far as body type, uh, yeah. motor running, all that, and that's part of coaching is looking in the future and signing guys and bringing them in here. And two guys that were going to other schools, Cox going to Ohio State, Anderson going to LSU. We turned oh, yeah, them around, bring them in here, and they. Uh, they're doing a good job, but you, you got to find a way. If we go to nickel or go to dime, can these guys maybe s- switch over and be a, a, a pass rusher inside instead of you know we got four guys right there that, yeah. at that one position. You don't want them on the sideline. They'll all help on special teams and all that. But what else we got? We here? should Let's, probably well, pay some bills. I about to say uh, before we get to a further, I want to give a shout out to Academia. I'm sitting here talking to you guys, yeah, just sucking down. The, in the <laughs> yeah, move the well. First, I'll tell you folks, we have the catfish plate here for the champions in front of us. For those of you watching, you can see it. If you're listening to the podcast later on, you're missing out. Um, this is their yeah. <laughs> get get the catfish closer to the coach. He needs that. I'm not gonna have. I'm gonna have a couple to go down my throat. <laughs> Here we go. But we also have their fried green tomatoes. And uh, when I came back from my trip, that's the first thing I wanted when I got back to the States. So having, having missed out on uh, American food for three weeks, when I got back to the South, I wanted me some fried green tomatoes. And I came here to Champions and got them when we did the show. Uh, best fried green tomatoes I've ever had. So uh, I highly Couldn't recommend swinging by Champions. Hmm? Couldn't get any of those in Cairo? No, they, they, they don't have those in Cairo. They have fried eggplant, which I, I can't eat eggplant. It's it, gross. It's – um. Uh, well, you know, and everybody thinks about Campy's great chicken. Everybody knows how great the chicken is here. But the catfish, just as good. Yep. The hush puppies, outstanding. Those fried green tomatoes, best you're going to get in town. And it's very good with this Academia beer. I'm having the honey blonde, and you've got the what? IQIPA is always. stuff, man. And they have chicken and waffles on Sunday, right? They That's do right. have chicken and waffles on Sunday. <laughs> but so you need to uh, swing out uh, to Champy's, get here, or go out to Academia. Academia, I'm wearing their hat. Uh Best new restaurant in Athens, voted on by folks in the flagpole, and I think Banner Herald. But either way, swing out to Academia. They do a ton in the community. They do a ton with uh, the, our other sponsors of the show. They're big friends with Europi. They're big friends with Champies. You can go in just about any place that has, you know, that uh, has uh, the local brewers, you know, on tap, and you'll find Academia. Their beer is phenomenal. They'll have – when you get the beer list out there, it's very impressive. There's usually about – it seems like 30 beers on there, and yep. they switch out each week. I can't tell you what they have this week because I need to go by. <laughs> yeah. it, it, they rotate it so fast and so quick. So you never you, you can go out there and never have the same beer twice. It's which, fantastic. Which makes it fresh and delicious yes. as well. So swing out to Academia. Uh, also, big shout-out to Europi. This is now the season. I know that uh, we are going to my son, pick my son up from practice the other day, and Rachel had been teaching all day. It was a Friday so it's like, what are we going to have for dinner? And my son's like, can we have your pie? Like, yes. Yes, we can. Yeah. So, so we went by your pie uh, last Friday. It was phenomenal. Uh, I had the sandwich, the uh, Nona's Italian. The boy had uh, pizza and a half. 
I bet. He's, I bet. Well, they, they, he's growing by leaps and brown, bounds. So, uh, look at his daddy. Yeah. He's no, going, but he's a big man. But he's growing <laughs> tall and muscular. You know, he, he actually looks good. He's not a fat tub of something. You know, sitting out here and sucking down beer. So no, that that kid is uh, growing, and he. Well, I, I was impressed because it's tough to eat an entire euro pie by yourself. But he did. And he man, managed to work out half of a second one. So did you eat uh, the other half? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> but only he wasn't going to include that. But know, it wasn't the same day. It was the next day. Oh, okay. So the following day I had second one. But that you know before we knew we had to get an extra one because one's just uh, for that kid. Wow. Anyway, swing by your pie. Uh, huge fans of the show. Drew and Natalie French, huge Georgia fans. They went to school at Georgia. They founded it here in Athens. You know, it is your uh, typical, not typical. It's your perfect example of the american dream absolutely so uh and it can be your dream if you want to open a franchise he's open they've opened 58 of them so if you want to make money hand over fist open up a your pie franchise it's like printing money it's it's <laughs> I, I don't think they've ever closed one it's like owning a uh, recruiting website yeah they <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guess who's getting uh, a pay cut now <laughs> no, uh, but one shot and again uh before we get back into it and i'll we'll go right to the questions i do want to mention one more time go out to athens ford this Friday between 4 and 6, you will see Harry Dog the mascot. You can get your photos taken with him. You know, they had that uh, fan day on the second day of practice. You couldn't take pictures. You couldn't uh, – you can only get certain things autographed. If you want to take your kids, you know, out to Athens Ford from 4 to 6, they can get their picture with Harry Dog. You can get your picture with Harry Dog. Uh, the cheerleaders will be out there. They'll be blaring the fight song and stuff like that. So swing out by Athens Ford, 4 to 6. And this month, they, they've got their uh, sales going on. I, I, I should have mentioned this earlier. Zero uh, percent financing for either five or six years for qualified buyers on almost almost their entire inventory. It's just an insane out there. And they have that uh, lifetime powertrain warranty. I just bought a Ford Explorer out there. And I have a lifetime powertrain warranty it on it. It looks very nice. It is yeah, nice, it looks, yeah. yeah. That looks well, good. It is. It's beautiful. And it drives like a dream. So uh, big fan of the Ford Explorer. I, I would highly recommend getting out there, taking a test drive. Ask for Justin. He's a good guy. He'll take care of you. And they, you know, you will not leave there unhappy. I guarantee it. If, if for any reason you leave unhappy, let me know, and I'll call up and uh, bless Chris out. <laughs> see if there we can go. get. Uh, you got anybody else you want to bring out on the? No, I want to get. Let's see if we can get five uh, questions in two minutes. Let's five. see. Here. I do need to mention uh, Aaron overhead doors real quick. Yeah. I like Aaron. I, I think yeah. the fact that they sponsor that deal. You know, you bring out a lot of good stuff in that three, two, one. And yeah, I, mean, I was about to say. You, I mean, you got. You got some, well, we got uh, we got some source. We had some people. They had they let the McGill Society members into the uh, scrimmage. Uh, to watch uh, Georgia scrimmage. Well, some of those McGill Society members just happen to be uh, members of UGASports.com. Thanks for letting them in. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, now here's the – now one of them came on the board and wrote like a – almost a 2,000-word practice report that I highly recommend you go to UGASports.com and click on. Anthony Dasher spoke to one of them, and he had some great uh, scrimmage notes. Nothing you – know, not a giving away had, the game plan. Guy but had 2,000. 2,000 words. On those out scrimmage What's notes. his handle? Uh, we're not telling you, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look him up and see what he said. It's a number yeah, for yeah. that guy. If you look on it, if you look on the board, they'll say post of the day. I switched it over last night. That guy had a huge practice report. And I spoke to some people and came up with three or four names that popped out. And the reason we bring this up is because Aaron Overhead Doors sponsors that article. It's called the Georgia 321 Report. I mentioned how Clemson's kind of uh, – hemming and hawing about playing Georgia and that and the reasons why that was going on. Georgia would like to schedule Clemson, but haven't, uh, they haven't been able to work it out. They've been, tr- been trying to. Uh, we talked about the fact that Georgia's trying to schedule Texas, which could be very interesting. That could be a, a neat home and away. Uh, we confirmed that Georgia's looking to have Oregon uh, come to the Mercedes-Benz Dome to kick off the stadium in 2022. Uh, all sorts of things in that 3 2, one including surprise guys. Yep, Eric Stokes is one. And the reason I got excited about Eric Stokes, I kind of, you know, we kind of feel like you own a story. That's your boy. It that's is. Your boy. Well, he's from Covington. I'm from Conyers. I know him. I know where he's played. I know the fields he's played on. I, I played on him too. So anybody from that, you know, Rockdale, Covington, Heritage area, I feel like that's a guy from my hometown, if you will. So I've always been excited about him. And we were there when he ran that 10 3 1 in the state championship, uh, you know, uh, state track championship in the qualifying and kind of even pulled up at the end. He could have, probably could have broken 10-2. I remember it very, very well. Yeah. You and I were next to each other. I think we were on our way out, we were walking if I'm out. not mistaken. And it came across the loudspeaker, and it was like uh, Eric Stokes, Eastside High School, 10-3-1. And we both stopped, and we were like, <laughs> 
who's that? <laughs> so I spun around and went back to the stadium <laughs> trying to find this guy. Did and you th- know in the uh, pregame of the uh, Austin P, they're going to have a 400-meter f- relay with – Campbell and him and Robertson. We're looking for the other fourth guy. So, uh, but, I mean, those three be pretty good relay team. Well, we actually asked him about, uh, you know, who's the fastest guys on the team. And, you know, a name that he popped up there that I did not suspect, DeAndre Baker. Oh, I believe he's, that. He's, he's fast. I didn't realize he was that. But I'm thinking, you know, elite track speed. Now, Tyson Campbell we know can run a 10-3. You know, Eric Stokes can do it too. And then when Eric Stokes came out and actually uh, committed to Georgia, or we, we were the only ones that I think predicted him to commit. We found out like 11 o'clock the night before he did it, you know. And so we were there. We were the only ones on there. So we kind of feel like that kid is our story. And it's not fair, but it's just what it is. So I was very excited to see about him. Uh, who else did we mention was a standout uh, new guy? A little uh, Poole, uh, yeah, Poole little, and Crumpton. A little yeah. Crumpton. Action, yeah, Crumpton yeah. getting out there. Akil Crumpton. And it's so easy to forget about Akil Crumpton, you know, because he's the uh, – uh, you're the smallest guy out there, and you think Terry Godwin, Demetrius Robertson. That is the story of camp. You know, uh, uh, Riley Ridley, that big, tall guy. You know, Jeremiah Holloman finally getting his shot up there. It's real easy. You know, Miko Hardman and the, what he did in the uh, national championship game. It's real easy to forget about a guy like Crumpton. But Crumpton had a heck of a uh, uh, scrimmage. So, uh it's also very easy to forget about maintenance on your garage doors. Yeah, there you go. Ah, what a tie-up. There you go. Uh, point being, if you need any of that sort of maintenance, and that 321 is all sponsored by Aaron Overhead Doors. Uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, we, we like that uh, column. Uh, if you'll do it every week, we'll sponsor it, and they're doing that. So if you want these tidbits, if you want these practice notes and stuff like that, do us a favor, and if you ever need anything in your garage door, go out to Aaron Overhead Doors. Call them up um, in that Beaufort, uh, North Atlanta area. Alpharetta, Cobb County, they will take care of you like nobody's business. And, again, that guy, the owner of it, is on our board. He reads this stuff all the time. Giant Georgia fan, so don't give your business to people who are not who are not supporting your school. Every, all of our advertisers support the University of Georgia. So if you support them, if you're a fan, why not use those people? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've got a few questions rolling in here. And you mentioned Crumpton, and I, I did want to say, I, I mentioned to Kirby last year, um, when we were seeing him. And, and, you know, I think people primarily thought of him when he came in as a uh, kick, re- as a kick, a kick return uh, right. guy, a, a specialist. Right. Um, but I, I remember watching him in practice, and I was like, this kid's got some hands. I mean, he can really reel them in. And I remember talking to Kirby about it. You know, we asked him during one of the press conferences, and I said, you know, Coach, what about the, the role that this kid can play for you in the passing game? And he said, honestly, you know, it's been it's been a, a blessing that we didn't really even know at the time. But, yeah, he's a very capable receiver. As you mentioned, you know, last year he didn't get to show that off as much. But maybe this is the year he gets to uh, take a take a step forward. I think that, uh, that that would be very impressive. Well, I love the idea. Like when you're talking about Coach, you, you see that uh, outside linebacker slide over into the slot, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, he's trying to pick up a tight end or something like that. And this crumpted kid comes across the face, crosses over on that slant. That kid is lightning fast and just he's going to make people – he's going to get open because he's going to drive people nuts. And when he cuts up of the seam, kid can fly too. So I think the, between him and uh, Tyler Simmons, I thought oh, yeah. Tyler – has uh, really come on. Again, that's the other track star. Yeah, maybe, that's, your, maybe, that's your fourth maybe, leg maybe in your, your fourth, fourth guy there. Uh, two guys who are not the biggest wide receivers you got out there, but uh, if Miko can do it, those guys can too. All right, we got uh, uh, several questions rolling in here. Definitely Let's want to em. touch on some of them. Uh, Chris Lambert asks, uh, our, the, the best intern Go back to in school, the land. Chris. <laughs> yeah, he wants you to know. You the guy was in here the other day? He was, for, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris wants to know, of the true freshmen on defense this year, who do you think has the biggest impact? Cox. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next, says Coach. <laughs> no, uh, I just, that was my, I, mean, I thought we had the buzzer on Facebook. <laughs> I had to get <laughs> no, I, I think you're right. I, I think that Brenton's the guy who's most game ready, um, you know, physically, it, really in all respects. I, I think that he's the guy that's going to be hardest to stop. But, um, you know, I think that you're going to see contributions from Tyson Campbell. Otis Reese is another guy. Someone asked about him, and we'll touch on that one. Look, the one thing that just keeps permeating my brain is if you look at these guys right here, the two linebackers, Tyndall and Walker, I'm telling you, stallions. Yes. You look at Anderson and Cox, stallions. You look at Reese and Campbell, 
Stallions. And Smith is a lot better at this point than I ever thought a guy could be as, at his size. Sure. He's very he's very smart. So then you got Davis. Those are just the defensive guys. Yep. Then you got Ford and Mays that are really making moves. You got uh, Cook. You got Fields. You, you got the uh, – it just uh, Hill and Salyer, I mean, come on, man. Uh, another good one here from Ronnie Brown. Uh, he wants to know. Ronnie from over at Auburn? That's right. That's right. No. Oh, the same guy. <laughs> uh, say that all the time. Ronnie says, uh, Ronnie says uh, interesting question here. Who has more receptions this year, Riley Ridley or Akil Crumpton? I'm leaning toward Ridley just because he's got the experience. I mean, he's he's been there. He's a little bit more of a guy that they have leaned on in the past. So uh, he makes sense. But I, I think Akil's a guy who could – find some opportunities just from an sure. alignment standpoint that's how coaches take you're going to you're gonna get an alignment situation where he's going to have to be in there with me and Co- terry godwin and all whereas ridley size uh, affords him to be on either side on the outside i think he's just going to be in more snaps and right. he's going to catch more passes just by being in the game but certainly uh Crumpton took advantage last week of being in there when they were practicing their passing game, really wanted to test their secondary. And that's one good way to, to have a scrimmage and maybe not have as many full-speed collisions inside and people getting matched up by throwing the ball. And I think that's what they were trying to do there. I mean, I never heard that quote, but that's, that's the way I used to look at it. You know, you can really evaluate guys rushing the passer, uh, playing the ball in the air and things like that. Yeah, Kirby but, said that they were working on the passing, stuff like that. And, you know, uh, Akil was mentioned by everybody that we uh, saw go out there. Uh, to, your, to your point, though, I, when you look at the, the way they line up on the field, I just see Riley Ridley out there a lot more. And the way Georgia's going to be able to run the ball, I think he gets a lot more uh, favorable coverages. Absolutely. So that they have to throw to him. Whereas, that's not to say Akil wouldn't, but uh, he might be in a little bit more traffic, which is why I was mentioning, you know, sometimes when they're, you know, he will take advantage of what the defense, how the defense lines up. And I can see them flipping them side to side, depending on what they're doing with their, you know, their nickel packages or their outside linebacker, their star guy, whatever you want to call him. But I definitely like the idea of uh, Riley Ridley one-on-one. Well, outside. here's the deal that will happen there. If you just come out there and you play our regular personnel, which would be three wide receivers and one tight end, you got Ridley out here, you got Robertson here, you got either Miko or Godwin in there. I would say that would be the first grouping of yeah. those four or three receivers. And then you got Werner and Nauta inside as a tight end. And then you got these heat seeking missiles back there at running back. So what are you going to do? You're going to come up there and play nine in the box, eight in the box, seven in the box, and play these guys man on the outside, lick my chops. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying I love that idea. If you're not, if you're not and, and you're going to go up against these man Mountain Dean on the right, you got six, eight, two, set, three, t- 50 on right tackle, six, seven, 340 at right guard, and the field tilts over that way. <laughs> you can't even see over those guys. I just think – as badly as I feel about Zamir not being there, I, I just I don't think we're gonna have to cancel the offensive schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we got some weapons now. I mean, the, that, that, just listen, listen to that lineup right there. Doesn't that impress you? That Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you talking Let's about see. skill level to the max. Five star, five star, five star, five star quarterback. Kirby doesn't like probably that five. I'm, I know he, Kirby, well, Kirby doesn't like it, but he, they acknowledge it. They when sure they, seem they to sp- go after those five yeah, stars, sure though. Uh, four star, four star. Riley was Riley Ridley. I know he's a four star, but how high up was he? Uh, I think he was a two fifty guy. Yeah. So, is there? I don't think there's anybody in that lineup that wasn't in the top two fifty, and seven of them were in the top one hundred. Yeah, that's. I think you're. I think you're onto yeah. something. And there. that's with the starters. You didn't get into the second team and nail almost just yeah. as many. I think Lamont Gallier might be your lowest rated guy. That's believable. Good player though, but. That's a guy that's probably going to play in the NFL. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not taking a shot at him. I'm just saying, you know, from the ranking standpoint, maybe we were uh, – well, actually, we had him ranked as a defensive tackle, didn't Exactly, we? yes. So, and yeah. that's the thing is – and I, I actually spoke to some people. I remember uh, just after he had come in and people uh, – talking to some people who had worked with him in high school, and they said, hey, this kid, he's, he's a great oh, defensive yeah. tackle, but his money's going to be his made co- on the his offensive His coach said line. that to me. I was at ESPN at the time, and uh, his coach was like, look, look, this kid wants to play defense, but I keep telling him it's a bad idea. He's an offensive 
uh, offensive line, and this kid will go to the NFL if he switches sides. And a year later, he switched sides, and now it looks like he's going to the NFL. So. Um, a really good question. You mentioned those heat-seeking missiles uh, at running back. Uh, but what about on defense? Uh, Bill Sumner asks, who will be the biggest hitters on this year's team? Who will be the guys bringing the wood? Will we see Otis Reese killing people this year? If Otis, he gets a chance, he will. <laughs> Otis Reese is uh, walking 15-yard penalty. I like I like <laughs> Otis Reese back there. He's really coming on. He's learning what to do. I mean, all those guys can tackle. They they do a good job of swarming the ball. We've we got good technique. Uh, you got those inside guys tackle well. You know, Ledbetter, Rochester, Carter, all those Clark. guys. Clark. I mean, excuse me. Uh, those guys can wrap you up. But uh, we just don't have the the – guy like Roquan as far as the numbers and the inside backer but uh, I promise you that those guys know what they're doing you know uh, you, you mentioned uh, Taylor has had a good fall yep. camp and knows Taylor. what to do and uh, you know Crowder and uh, Patrick those guys so uh, it's not like we're, we're going to be that much of a fall off because I think one thing you always talk in terms if you're a coach philosophy wise is we're going to all be out there together all 11 of us we're going to run the Georgia defense you know what to do we know what maybe some of our inadequacies are but the other team doesn't we're going to cover those up with our calls and we're going to do a lot of things to to uh, augment our our really strong suits and uh, we got that kind of package here I mean these guys know what they're doing they can get them lined up and they can uh, that's one thing that I really feel like as an offensive guy that coached offense I think our offense and defense is a lot better prepared than most teams because of, of the volume of stuff they look at in practice you know I used to kind of just take it real slow installing the offense making sure they knew what to do And but you go out there the first couple of days and they're going against Bringing pressure. I mean, Coach Tucker got them coming off the edge for to get off the bus. I mean, they, <laughs> they, they're bringing everybody. Well, you speaking of, we, we heard that. We heard that in the uh, scrimmage this past Saturday, there were a lot of sacks. You uh, know. Well, that's going to happen when you yeah. know when you're. No, if when you, you know they're passing. If yeah. you're a defensive player and you're not and you're not worried about the run or the draw or the things like that. Uh, but that's the kind of way you want to challenge your team, yep, though. Absolutely. You need to be able to do it when everybody. You know, you got to be able to throw and catch the ball when you know in certain situations. And I'm not going to take any pictures. <laughs> How many pictures have you taken of me in your life? Man, I don't know. I wish I had <laughs> hey, a nickel for every one. How's your son doing? Good, good to see. <laughs> Folks, that is uh, Dan Evans, long time. Dan, uh, Dan's the man. Dan has been a the photographer for UGA Athletics for as long as I, I've been doing this, 25 years. He was doing it maybe 10 years before I got He's here. He's the greatest. Hey, when we used to do those camps and those kids come in, you had 400 at a time, you, you're shaking every kid, saying yeah. you want to make them think like he's the best kid in the camp. <laughs> Man, I was. I was Dan would tough. shoot all those pictures, then turn around, take them back to his shop, get them all developed, get them all printed, get them back to the camp that afternoon to distribute them. No, you got to sign and, them too. Yeah, oh, and then Dan, uh, when I was working at the Georgia Center for Continuing Education, I would drive out to his shop all the time, and this man fixed my photographs Dan every the week. Man, let, let's. Thanks, what Dan. else we got here? Well, we're I think I, are we going to step into the are we going to step into the coaching room today? Or? Yeah, we got how long we got? I think we got time for that. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to talk about tempo today because everybody hears about teams running things fast and everything, and you know defending that and the, you know fastball so to speak. But it all got started with uh, the idea of, of teams trying to go real fast and run plays before you could get lined up, and they they knew how to do it and, and the way they talk about it in terms of for our fans there we'll just talk the, the real fast stuff is what we call indy which is for indianapolis 500 you're going really fast or nascar and you know people say nascar nascar so your your line's going to line up real fast and you're going to go to the line and you're going to run the play no matter what they're in so you're just going up there and you're trying to run the play before they can go and get it snapped then you're going to have the next speed where you're going to look, give the, uh, the uh, thought that you're going to run the play fast, but you're going to see what they're lined up in, and then you're going to run the play 
right off the bat, you know, maybe 10 or 15 seconds to go. Do you change the play but, but, based on but, what they're in? But from that standpoint, you really don't have a play till you see what they're in. Okay, you know? gotcha. And you can do that. You can do it both ways. You can give them a play and try to run it or let them see what they're in and then change it or you just don't even have a play and then do it. And then the third thing is just lining up and, and looking to the sideline for a signal after the defense is set. And then you go up there and, and call a play. And that's where you see a lot of these RPOs where the quarterback, we've talked about that before, reads the defense and either runs it or passes it. And and the linemen like that because they don't have to run back to the huddle and all that. They're just up at the line and what we call a racehorse stance. You know, they're standing up, ready to go, and then three-point stance instead of down. Right. And then uh, – so, but then a lot of times you'll see the quarterback take his hands like this. I know we're on a podcast, but he'll go like this. That means we're going to huddle. Okay. You know, so we're going to huddle up. And so then he laces his fingers together. Yeah, and we're, we're going to huddle, and we're going to get in there, and we're going to call it, and then we're going to come up to the line and and run the plays. And that's when you when you're really trying to milk the clock. So you got a tempo situation where you got fastball, you got medium, and then you got recognize what the defense. But what's really good about being able to do that as an offense for our defense is a lot of teams in our league, particularly Auburn, do that, and it gives them a chance to see it on a daily basis. But it also gives us a chance to take advantage of executing it. If if a team can't get lined up, we got the stuff to do it. And usually, you know, we'll have a formation signal and then a play, but we've got some fastball stuff where one word means the, the, the play and the formation. So, really? So we could be saying uh, Navajo or something like that, and that means we're going to run this formation. But we really like to do that after a big play. Let's just say – Like a turnover? Well, no, not necessarily a turnover. That's a good question. But let's just say we hand the ball off to Swift and he runs 25 yards. So we, whatever our name for NASCAR or Indy, we're hollering that, and we're going down because the defense is a little bit unnerved because of that. Sure. And you don't want them to substitute. Because they're defensive tr- uh, lineman trailing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want them to substitute because right. if you do substitute, then the line judge or who – I mean, the back the, – the guys for substitution will go up there and stop the ball and right. give the other team a chance. So we're, we're going up there with the people we have in the game, and we're going to run a play real fast after that. And it really helps you if they don't know what to get into, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, so that's what we're talking about, tempo there. Quick, quick, quick question. Do – is there a snap count? Is it off the clap? Is it off of what? You okay, know? that's a good one. There, there's certain things that, you know, used to be – and it started out in Denver where they call it silent count. Mm-hmm. And that was based on the, 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 uh, the fact you couldn't hear the snap count. So the, the quarterback would raise his heel – and the, they would snap it. And when he raises his heel, the guy at the line of scrimmage, the center, would say, set, go, so that people up there could hear it to know that's what a silent count would be. But there's also a fake dummy silent count where he'll do his heel twice to try to get him offside. And then if it's really loud, you got to clap, which means you don't have to clap. I mean, you got to <laughs> <laughs> you got the clap. That was terrible. He might. He might. You got, you got the clap signal, which tells him snap the ball on the, uh, you know, hurry up, you know, like that. And then a lot of times you'll hear the quarterback saying, hurry, 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 because you're getting down to the five seconds on the clock, you yeah. know. And so he'll say, hurry, 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 and then the center will snap it when he wants to. But the one thing you always tell your team, as an offensive player, the only difference between offense and defense as far as an advantage is you know the snap count. Exactly. And the teams that just run on one snap count are are ridiculous to, to not take advantage of that. You know, you need to use – mix it up because you get a guy off the edge that's watching that center's head and everything. He can – so you got to mix it up. And we do a good job. That Jake's really a master at that, does a really good job. And – I always tell our team, you know, we used to have a hard count, you know, where we'd have inflection on our voice to get them to jump off sides, and it would always be, you know, based on the team that was our biggest rival. We would we would call it the Gator count. You know, we'd, we'd go, set, blue 42, blue 42, okay. And then, then we would start it over again. If it's on the Gator, you know, hoping they're yeah. going to jump off sides and then say, hey, they're a bunch of dumbass Gators, you know, or something. <laughs> so that's the way you did it. So when they're running that uh, after that that one play, you know when they're running up, they've you've thrown a long pass downfield. Everybody's running up. They know they're going to play. They're going to run. 
that one play has a uh, snap count incorporated into it? It's usually a quick count. Quick count. Okay. It's based on the on the heel or you know or the gotcha. quarterback. But you know you always got the ability to go on the silent count because of yeah. playing away from home. But at home you can call out the signals a lot gotcha. better. Beautiful. I, I think that's all the time we have for this. I week's think show. so. Anyway, well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Well, big shout-out to Athens Ford. Again, go out there from 4 to 6 this Friday. Big shout-out to your pie. If you want a franchise, check out Drew French. He can help you out. Uh, Aaron over at Doors, huge Georgia fans. Thanks to you so much for sponsoring our 3 one report. And, of course, uh, Champies here at Baxter. We're having – I'm going to try some of this uh, – uh, fried catfish here, or uh, you know, I'll probably just take home all those uh, fried green tomatoes. Big shout out to Academia. Swing out there, get the best beer and best food that you probably ever had in your life. And of course, uh, uh, Cable East out in Statham. Robert Ball, appreciate you being a sponsor of the show. We will see you folks next Tuesday. That's it for this episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast. Tune in next week for more Georgia Bulldogs news and notes from Athens. <laughs>